Hello, I am Gina McIntyre, the Chief Executive of the Special EU Programmes Body. and We are responsible for managing European Union peace funding across Northern Ireland and the border counties of Ireland. The peace programme was created as a direct response to opportunities presented by the peace process in 1995 and supported by the European Union, the Northern Ireland Executive and the Government of Ireland. And since then, there has been an investment of over 2.2 billion euro in funding to 22,500 peace and reconciliation projects. And over the years, these projects have had a profound impact. They've helped to change attitudes and build positive relations between divided communities. And this is exactly what the peace programme was designed to do. However, peace building is a very delicate process and is subject to an ever-changing environment. It doesn't happen overnight and indeed it takes generations to accomplish. But it also requires a concerted effort of many different ordinary people who've had the courage to take risks in order to build a better society and a better future. And that is the ultimate goal of every single project that has been supported through the Peace Programme. Each project represents a unique peace building story or experience. And the SUPB is regularly asked to speak to European delegations and those from further afield about the work of the projects in the Peace Programme and to share the lessons and the learning. And this inspired us to create a single online living archive of this important and historic information in a format that can be accessed by anyone across the world at any time. And therefore we are delighted to launch the platform today as it represents our vision of a central archive charting the history and progress of the Peace Programme from all perspectives. An archive which will grow as the Peace Programme moves into the next stage of development and becomes a Peace Plus Programme. And going forward, we want people to use this platform as a collaborative tool. A tool which can connect all of those interested in peace building with many different organisations who have been supported so far. We would also encourage those who have received funding to provide us with any additional information that they may still hold about their work, as this will further enrich the content of the platform. I would now like to introduce you to our first speaker of the day, the European Commissioner for Cohesion and Reforms, Ms. Elisa Ferreira. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I can present to you today the new Peace Learning Platform. This platform represents nearly three decades of living history, the amazing story of reconciliation, told through the testimonies of local people, told through case studies and evaluations, told through more than 22,500 local projects for peace and reconciliation. The European Commission is proud to have been able to support you in this. We supported you from the very beginning with the establishment in 1995 of the very first peace program. This was one of Europe's contributions to the peace process in Northern Ireland. A unique program for unique circumstances. Over the years, we have provided 2.2 billion euros for 22,500 projects. Some of these projects have been big, such as our support for the iconic Peace Bridge in Derry, London Derry. But most of these projects have been very local in schools and communities, working with young people and with neighbours. Little leaps of courage by local people on both sides of the border. And all of these stories are worth telling. So it is high time that we had a single archive, a single reference point, a single repository to tell the stories and make old hard work visible, to disseminate lessons and experience and serve as beacon of inspiration to others. And most of all, to keep the momentum going forward. Because despite all the progress since 1995, the peace process is once again being called into question and we must provide a decisive answer. The answer of shared histories, the answer of shared experience, the answer of thousands of actions which have built or rebuilt relationships between ordinary people at the local level. The European Commission has been consistent in its support for your work.
and we will continue to support you in the years to come. So I look forward to reading the stories of what you have achieved. I also look forward in the coming years to seeing many new stories and many new achievements. And I look forward to seeing you in person as soon as we are able to. My best wishes to all. And of course, good health to you and your families. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner, for taking the time to send us those kind words of support and encouragement. The European Commission has shown us much support uh, regarding the development of this platform over the past two years. And I'd like to also acknowledge the support that we continue to receive from our own sponsor departments, the Department of Public Expenditure and Reform in Ireland and the Department of Finance in Northern Ireland. Both departments have taken a very keen interest in the development of the Peace Programme's learning platform. They recognise the important role that it will play in promoting the excellent cross-border peace building work which has been supported for almost three decades. Therefore, I'd like to introduce messages of support from the Minister of Finance in Northern Ireland, Conor Murphy, and the Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform in Ireland, Michael McGrath. I'm delighted to be here at this virtual event and to help showcase the launch of the Peace Programme's learning platform. The North and the Border Region has benefited hugely from peace funding since 1995. It has given much needed support, provided a transformative impact for our citizens, and most importantly, on a cross-border basis. We're currently delivering our fourth Peace Programme. Each successive programme has delivered targeted and meaningful interventions, benefiting shared education, shared space, capital build projects and support for children and young people. The peace programmes highlight the ongoing commitment of the European Commission to support the peace process in our region. It also shows our joint commitment with colleagues in the South to work together in getting the most benefit from EU to support our region. The peace programmes learning platform being launched today provides an opportunity to showcase the uniqueness of these programmes. The platform is an extensive archive of information it provides the opportunity for anyone to view online key records and access a wealth of information on one user-friendly platform. It's a record of the many thousands of projects that were supported by these programmes and has provided an important and unique opportunity for those directly involved to share and tell their stories. It records the different approaches used between the programmes and the lessons learnt. I would encourage all those who have an interest to use the platform and to continue to engage with the SEUPB. Lastly, I would like to thank Gina and her team in the SEUPB for their enthusiasm and dedication in developing this tremendous platform. Hello everyone, I'm very pleased to welcome you to today's launch of the new Peace Programmes Learning Platform. Since their inception in the 1990s, successive EU-funded Peace Programmes have been really powerful enablers of peace and reconciliation on this island. Over this period, some 2.3 billion euro has been invested in more than 22,000 projects, building and embedding peace and reconciliation across Northern Ireland and a border region of Ireland. The new peace platform is a wonderful testament to this. It captures the story of these unique programs from their earliest days to the present in rich detail. It preserves this valuable material which might otherwise have been lost to time and brings it to new audiences. I believe that the Peace Platform will be an invaluable resource for all those involved in peace building in the future, including policymakers, researchers and voluntary organisations. The platform offers a wealth of learning which can inform the work of these individuals and organisations both in Northern Ireland and Ireland and importantly further afield in other, in other post-conflict societies. I would like to pay tribute to the staff of the Special EU Programmes Body for their efforts in developing this important database, working in close cooperation with Primodi and SJC Consultancy. I would especially like to thank the many organisations and individuals across the region who have given so generously of their time, memories and archive material in order to make the platform the rich resource it is. This would not have been possible without your input. 
I am also delighted that we are now building on this legacy through the new Peace Plus program. Peace Plus will write a fresh chapter in the story of the peace programs by providing more than 1 billion euro of new cross-border funding between 2021 and 2027. This is a reflection of the continuing strong commitment of the European Union and the Irish and UK governments to supporting peace and cooperation into the future. In time, the learnings of this new program will be reflected in the Peace Platform as well. The Peace Platform will be a living archive which will continue to grow over the years ahead. I look forward to following its evolution and I encourage all those with an interest in the history of these programmes and in their future to make full use of this wonderful new resource. Thank you very much. Many thanks to both ministers for their words, particularly as we move into this new and exciting chapter for the SEPB and the evolution of the Peace Programme, the final development of the Peace Plus Programme. Now I think it's about time that you get to see the platform and how it works. This video is our longest, so please bear with us, it's about eight minutes, but it's really important that you understand what this platform can do and the vast amount of information that is available now in one place and can be searched at your leisure. This video will also represent an excellent navigation tool. So I do hope that like me, you will be suitably impressed with what this platform is able to achieve. The homepage of the platform gives a brief overview of the context in which the first peace program was created back in 1995. It also clearly highlights what the platform has been designed to do. It's been created to help users discover, collaborate and learn about the story of the peace program and the impact that is made in supporting the ongoing peace process. The platform itself is divided into four distinct sections, including the main navigation or homepage, story of peace, which contains key themes and case studies, a detailed timeline of the EU's involvement in peace building, and a very comprehensive learning section, which offers full search functions to all of the records contained within the platform. At the top of this page, you can also see a universal search facility, which can take you anywhere in the platform and appears on each page. As I mentioned earlier, we want you to use this platform as a collaborative tool through which you can collaborate with us on issues relating to the peace program or collaborate with those who have or are delivering peace funded projects. To become a part of this collaborative community, we would encourage you to sign up for an account. You can do this by clicking the login button just here. To register, click the sign up button here. This will take you to a specially created registration page where you can input your contact details. Now, if we move back to the main homepage, you can start your platform journey by clicking on the green button just here. This takes you to a general overview of the Peace Programme, which highlights how it has evolved over many years. If you move to the left-hand side of the page in the introduction section, you have a choice of four subpages. The first will take you to a timeline which plots out the main events which relate to the creation of the Peace Programme, from Jacques Delors' historic visit to Northern Ireland in 1992, to the stakeholder engagement process for the new Peace Plus Programme in 2020. As the programme continues to develop, so too will this timeline grow and evolve. If we move back to the introduction section, there is a separate page on the evolution of the Peace Programmes. This page both complements and adds more detail to the timeline with some additional analysis on the key events that have helped to shape the peace programme over the years. It references the Good Friday Belfast Agreement, the structural fund arrangements which relate specifically to the peace programmes, as well as some of the emerging challenges it faced. This section of the platform also contains a useful at a glance summary of each programme one through to four, as well as details of the eligible area of the programme across Northern Ireland and the border counties of Ireland. There's also a helpful abbreviations page to understand all of the technical jargon and unique acronyms which can be found across the platform. If we move into the section below here called Peace Programmes, we find a lot more really useful detail on each individual programme. All of the different pages found here have a similar structure. If we move into the Peace One overview, you can see that information is provided on different elements of the program, including its background, aims and objectives, the logic model which underpins the program, and its structure with all the different priorities, measures, and cross-cutting principles. 
The page also provides a detailed overview of the program's budget, delivery mechanisms and processes, outputs and impacts, as well as, at the bottom of the page, some useful hyperlinks to all of the key program reports and evaluations. If we move on to the section below, we come to a different part of the platform which focuses on the key underlying themes that have emerged throughout the years. Each theme is available through a drop-down menu and is grouped under different titles such as Reconciliation, Local Authorities, Social Inclusion and Community Uptake, Ex-Prisoners, Victims and Survivors, Children and Young People. If we move down to the Children and Young People theme, you can see detailed narrative on the impact that our shared past has had on the younger generation. The theme goes on to highlight the significant levels of support that different versions of the PEACE programme have provided to vulnerable children, as well as the shared education initiatives, CASE and Sharing from the Start, which are currently funded under PEACE 4. Under the Key Themes section, the platform gives you access to hundreds of different case studies categorised by each successive PEACE programme. The main searching capabilities of the platform are, however, contained within the Learning section. This represents one of the more technical build aspects of the platform itself, which involved extensive design and development. The dashboard of this section tells you how many projects, reports, videos, audio reports and images are contained within the platform at any one time. We anticipate that these numbers will increase as the platform grows over time. To start any search, you simply move across to the Query button on the left-hand side of the screen. From here, you can enter any relevant search criteria, such as, for example, Women in Peacebuilding. You can then filter the search by having women in the title of the project, its description or project partner name. You can see that this brings up 1,562 entries split into multiples of 25. You can change this to show multiples of 10, 50 or 100 as well. Your search can be refined by using the sliding scales below for budget and or project range or date. Further search refinement options include by program, piece 1 through to 4, by town, city, county, by partner county, and by accountable department. An advanced search option also exists allowing enhanced refinement by different program priorities, measures, and submeasures. You can switch to an analysis page about your search which provides some useful overview graphs on the number of projects funded by time period and also by project budget. Beside the analysis tab, you can also bring up a partner location map. This map gives details of the lead partner location. It should be noted, however, that the scope of project activity in most cases extends well beyond the partner location. We would encourage funded projects to provide additional information to help us enhance the detail available here. If we move back across the left-hand side under reports, you can also search for a diverse range of peace program related documents, such as evaluations, research papers, press releases, and project case studies. As when searching for projects, you can refine your search by content, title, and author, by piece program one through to four, as well as by different document classifications, by themes such as cultural diversity and economic renewal, as well as by a number of different stakeholders, including churches and faith-based groups, the community and voluntary sector, and local councils. These search tools have been specifically designed to help you more easily navigate through the large volume of data contained within the platform. The platform also contains a wealth of different program-related videos, audio recordings and images. These go as far back as piece one with many developed by the projects themselves. A number of these videos have been transferred across from old VHS tape, restored back to life as much as possible and digitized for inclusion within the platform. You can search for a specific video by again, program and specific theme. For example, by clicking into the third video option here, you'll be taken to the video itself. Full details of each video are provided here in terms of a brief description, its duration, program relevant theme and stakeholder and or project. Not only does the platform contain a lot of video content, but it also holds a large number of audio recordings. These contain interviews of Peace Funded Project staff, beneficiaries and recordings of various programme events over the years. Each clip has been restored and tagged with a detailed description of what it relates to. The final section under media is a repository of the many different images and photographs of the Peace programme, which showcases the positive impact that has made over the years. More details as relevant are available under each photograph. 
This is a section of the platform which will develop further as the program continues to evolve and more projects are funded. Other images are contained within the many different evaluation reports and case studies contained within the platform. Finally, the platform also contains a very comprehensive frequently asked questions or FAQ section. It covers some technical issues as well as basic questions about the different search options and accessibility. However, if you have any issues about the platform or want to potentially add to its content, you can reach us directly via email peaceplatform at sepb.eu. This is just a quick whistle-stop tour of the Peace Programs Learning Platform with some of its key functions. It is a living archive and will grow over time with your help. Please enjoy it and thank you. So that was a virtual tour of what the platform has to offer and it by itself does not give you a real sense of the amount of effort involved in pulling everything together. This took many, many months of painstaking research as well as the technical IT support needed to create the platform's infrastructure. And as such, I'd like to thank our contractors, SJC Consultancy and Primodi for their role in the creation of the platform. We honestly could not have done this work without them. And the next video gives you a brief behind the scenes view of the, some of the elements of that painstaking work required to build this archive. We were uh, able to locate hundreds of case studies as well as video and audio material. And so we were able to capture those voices through testimonials and through case studies. There's been a number of stages in terms of the, our archiving and our cataloguing process and that was um, selecting appropriate materials, preparing those documents and media to be digitised, cataloguing, describing the materials, indexing, um, having a, a unique identifier for each single, every single document and every single um, piece of media and audio with tape that we had. We also undertook a detailed cl uh, classification exercise to group documents and media by type. Individually, there were almost 100,000 pages needed to be digitised. Somewhere around 1,000 different files and folders. Each of those had to be edited and quality checked and made searchable for the Peace Platform. So it was quite a task. It took weeks to physically scan each individual page. As part of the process, there were dozens of old VHS tapes and audio tapes, which had been sitting in boxes for well, decades, uh, some of which were in a very bad way. Digitizing the VHS tapes was quite a challenge because you have to physically watch each individual tape. Some of the videos were maybe 10, 15 minutes, while others were upwards of two, two and a half, maybe three hours. So it also took time as well. Some of the videos were in bad condition. Um, you can still see that in the digitized versions, unfortunately. But over time, those tapes would have deteriorated. And for us to save all these old formats and all these old videos and interviews, documentaries, it was very rewarding knowing that that's them saved now digitally forever for future generations to look at. Um, many of the documents and the media that we had uncovered uh, may have been lost over time and so this project has really ensured that the legacy of the Peace Programme has been captured and that's something we're very proud of. Just to sum up, um, SJC Consultancy's approach uh, was really just to provide a taster of um, the Peace Programme to give you an overall insight into what has been funded over the last 25 years. Our approach really has involved numerous stages which we've outlined from sourcing um, extensive amount of material, cataloguing, digitising, developing case studies, um, developing research papers on the story of peace and the evolution of the peace programme. Then in terms of the next stage, uh, we were responsible for handing over all of that content um, to our project partners Primode, who were then responsible for the design and build of the website and the look and feel. The whole team at SJC are proud of what we've achieved and what has been captured in the development of the Peace Platform. We hope that you find the platform an enjoyable and informative experience. I'm sure you will all agree, after watching that video, the impressive amount of effort that it has taken so far to get the platform ready to launch today. It required a lot of time, dedication and patience, but the results speak for themselves. 
And I want to give you a little taster of just some of the people who have been involved in these such projects that are recorded in the archive. And our next three interviews are from three individuals who are involved in the delivery of Peace 4 funded projects, but who also have years and years of experience of working with the Peace Programme. Two of them, Dr Martin McMullen and Norma Shearer OBE, represent organisations that have been in receipt of Peace funding back when the programme was first created in 1995. Martin has been involved in Peace funded youth work for more years than he will care to admit. And this work has been delivered through Youth Action Northern Ireland and has helped many thousands of young people to grow, develop and become positive agents of change within their own community. Norma is the Chief Executive of the Training for Women Network and over the years she's been a leading voice in Northern Ireland advocating the invaluable role of women in peace building. Her work and that of the peace funded projects she's delivered has been recognised at both the national and international level. And also joining Norma and Martin is Sue Divin, who is the Peace Four Local Action Plan Manager for Derry City and Straban District Council. And throughout the current programming period, Sue has overseen the delivery of some very high quality peace and reconciliation activities. She's also worked really hard throughout the pandemic to ensure that Peace Four funding has been made available where it is needed the most. The councils are central in the delivery of the peace programmes and have been for a very, very long time. And these three individuals represent just a small section of the many hundreds of dedicated project staff who are involved in the delivery of peace from programme funding. And without their continued efforts, the programme would not be the success that it is now. Youth Action Northern Ireland has had a commitment to peace building and building good relations and community relations from the 1970s, including work from Michael Doherty. And we really appreciated the opportunity of the peace funding back in the 1990s, uh, 1985, 1996, where we initially invested in a lot of work around work with young mothers in the late 90s, uh, but also work with young men, particularly helping young men understand masculinity and violence and alternatives to violence both personally and within their communities. One of the significant things from the EU peace investment has been the opportunity to work with partners in the Republic of Ireland. Uh, one of our most recent projects, Amplify and the Youth Network for Peace, has allowed us to develop partnerships and build relations within and across our youth work sector to really maximise the contribution of youth work to the lives of young people. So for example, we've worked with Macro and Affirma in the Republic, Youth Work Ireland, Faroiga, Irish Youth Foundation, for example. So looking at lots of different models of how do we support young people in peacekeeping, peacemaking and peace building. So when we talk about peacekeeping, for example, we talk about opportunities for young people just to come together and to be together through music, through dance, through drama, through sport. Those opportunities often are not afforded to many young people who often say that they get to the age of 16 and still haven't met somebody from the other religion. The peacemaking part of it is really important in terms of bringing uh, young people together from different backgrounds to actually have dialogue together and to have empathy, empathetic, empathetic education where they can understand perspectives from the other community. So where they can come together to talk about difference and diversity. The final part of the jigsaw is really peace building um, where we look at how do we support young people in terms of joining in with the world and being uh, players in civic society. So for example, young people uh, organising their own youth campaigns, being involved in social action, etc. So these are just some of the examples of the EU peace investment uh, in the lives of young people and through Youth Action Northern Ireland. So Youth Action has received over 5 million investment in those 25 years. While that money has came to Youth Action, it has also been about redistributing that money to local partners and to other voluntary youth work organisations. So for example, on our Amplify programme, we support one of our members in Downpatrick uh, financially and uh, through um, support in terms of curriculum materials to be able to deliver that programme. The Youth Network for Peace brought 13 partners around the table and um, to be able to deliver on a project that really galvanises a movement of uh, children and young people committed to peace building in this part of, of the world. Those partners could not have accessed that money um, other than through ourselves um, as the lead partner in, in those projects. The impact in communities and with young people has been phenomenal. I'll provide you just with some examples um, of recent. A young person, for example, spoke. Our programme was for both Protestants and Catholics, and it gave us the chance to learn. They gave us different scenarios and things to talk about. 
There was a lot of discussion, especially on the residential to Belfast. It wasn't just our group on the residential, there were also people from Dundalk in the Republic of Ireland, people from the travelling community and other groups from Belfast. There was a real mix of religions. We were able to talk comfortably and not be scared to actually talk about differences. We were often afraid to talk about some of those things anywhere in public. None of us can be complacent here in Northern Ireland on the border counties. We need to continually invest in the lives of young people and the communities that they live in. Many young people still have not been the benefactors of peace investment. And by that I mean young people, for example, still have not met with young people from the other community. So we need to pay very, very close attention to that as, as we move forward. We already see many restrictions to young people being able to meet with the other, even within their own communities, across communities, across Ireland and across the British Irish Isles, and in fact across Europe. We need to remove those hurdles to help open up opportunities where young people can widen their horizons and have growth mindsets. We finally need to connect young people across Europe as a dynamic and committed group of peace builders through a network for peace. In that initiative, we should make very clear there is no place for violence. That is where I see further investment for the future. Hi, my name's Sue Devon. I'm the Peace Corps Programme Manager for Derry City and Strabane District Council. We're in the northwest of Northern Ireland and our council area got £6.7 billion under Peace Four Building Positive Relations Local Authority Action Plans. And even though we worked through uh, the end of a pandemic and Brexit, we know that that money made a big difference in our council area. In Right from developing our plan to managing the process to delivery on the ground, we worked with communities and identities right across the urban and rural geography of our council area. And overall, we had 69 projects that reached 7,000 or more sustained participants in cross-community reconciliation work. The importance of EU funding for our council area is as simple as this. The work wouldn't happen if we didn't have that funding. Uh, we know that most community relations funding is on an annual cycle, so the fact that the EU funding is on a multi-year cycle allows groups, it's basically a catalyst, it allows our groups a focus and some sustainable strategic thinking in how they do peace and reconciliation work, and that's the key difference. And how groups on the ground deliver good relations and reconciliation peace building work is very much up to them. We can use everything from sports to cultural history and heritage work to research to community development and capacity building approaches to capital builds and and we do all of that within our program and more the impact that we know of the funding in our council area is really significant and it's not just the big things like saying we worked on delivering projects across three interfaces or four rural shared spaces that maybe had been a bit contested before um, we know that of all the people that we reached, we also put out at least 300 items of good news stories across 20 different media outlets. But let's take it down to the individuals. The feedback from our projects would say that 9 out of 10 children under 11 said that their project, funded by the EU, helped them to make a new friend of a different religion. And a good chunk of those children didn't have a friend of a di different religion before this project. We know that 9 out of 10 of our overall participants said that their project had brought them into shared spaces that they hadn't seen as shared before and increased their confidence and trust in continuing to go to shared spaces that they wouldn't have been in apart from this project. We know that 8 out of 10 of all our participants said that they now understood a lot more about their own and other people's culture, heritage and identity, including the heritage and identity of ethnic minority communities locally. And we know that 8 out of 10 of all our participants said that their project made them less prejudiced and more confident to speak out against sectarianism and racism and prejudice. So the money has made a difference. We also know that community organisations who delivered those projects said that they had a sustainable benefit of stronger networks and professional relationships with community groups across the city and district in different types of communities and that they would keep working because they now had more sustainable skills and good relations work as well. But let's take it down even further. One lady in a rural project 
living in a village, told her project delivery agent she had never been in the village just up the road from her. And as a result of this project, she now has friends in that village and she'll be back. One child, a young girl in a cross community summer scheme, wrote a poem on a birthday card to a new best friend who was from the other side of the interface. And as far as we know, that was the first cross interface summer scheme in Northern Ireland. So it works right down to those individuals. I've worked in community relations work for over 15 years in peace building. And the money that comes from the peace programmes and from the EU makes a significant difference locally. So we would like to thank the EU for that funding. First of all, I'd like to thank the special EU programmes body for their kind invite to share a small part of the benefits of the EU funding to the women of Northern Ireland as part of the Peace Programme Learning Platform. I can't believe it's 25 years since Peace Monies first came to Northern Ireland. I'd like to begin by paying tribute to three men who helped make this support available to people in Northern Ireland and the border counties. I refer to the late John Hume and the Reverend Ian Paisley, and last but not least Jim Nicholson, who continues to support the work of both TWM and many other women's organisations, even though he's retired. These three men truly left behind a legacy that will probably never be seen again. Europe's support for Northern Ireland, and particularly women, has and will continue to have a far-reaching impact on Northern Ireland and the surrounding border counties. I have been CEO of Training for Women Network now for almost 20 years. Training for Women Network is the leading women's organisation in Northern Ireland for the education, training, employment, self-employment and peace building of women across the province. From the inception of the peace programme in Northern Ireland in the border counties, I've been involved in distributing over 40 million, firstly as programme manager in Proteus Northern Ireland, and then in my current role as CEO of Training for Women Network. I came into post with PWN during Peace 2. PWN has never strayed far from the path of education, training and peace building over the last 25 years. In Peace 1, we had 395 applications, which totaled 32 million. We received 4.8 million funding and funded 114 projects, less than one third of the applications for funding that we received. Through that funding, 4,271 women participated in training and 347 jobs were created or supported. Under Peace 2, we were able to distribute a further 6.1 million. Again, we were massively oversubscribed with over 150 applications received. We were able to fund up 34 projects up to three years. These projects exceeded their targets by almost 50%, with 5,723 women benefiting, 4,020 qualifications gained, and 1,718 women entering employment. The Peace 2 extension period saw a further 191 applications received, the highest number made to any extension measures. We funded 52 projects in total. Yet again, the targets and outcomes were phenomenal, outstripping the targets by 100%. The number of women in this phase who took part in the project were 6,542, with 3,537 qualifications gained and 896 women into employment. At the next phase under Peace 3, PWN became an applicant and we were successful with 23 partners. We were able to secure 2.84 million Yet again, 2,692 women were engaged and benefited from this project. In summary, 20,428 women were engaged, 2,961 women gained employment during Peace 1 and Peace 2. Under Peace 4, we again secured with three partners just under 1 million. The results were truly fantastic, with over 1,050 women across Northern Ireland and the border counties engaging in peace building work even during a global pandemic. In total throughout the peace programmes that TWN have been directly involved in, there have been 11,599 women receiving some form of accreditation, from digital accreditation through the pandemic to ILMs Level 3, 5, as well as OCRs, and Level 2, Level 3 and Diploma. Impressive indeed. Without the support of the EU, the women would probably never have achieved these accreditations. The monies have made so much possible. It has brought communities together, built lasting friendships, 
created infrastructure where none existed, helped women gain jobs, be it in self-employment and employment, and importantly, to live together. Thank you all for joining us today as we launch the Peace Programme's learning platform. We are very, very proud of all the work that it contains, work that has been delivered by so many different individuals and organisations over the years. And the peace building partnerships which they represent have stood the test of time and continue to have a positive impact today. So I hope that you enjoy this new living archive and that you will share it with your colleagues and friends. Thank you.